So, this is a review of bonds that are found between atoms, not between the molecules. That's a different video. This is bonds between atoms. And the first one we're going to go over is this one. Ionic bonds. Then the next one we're going to do is this. Metallic bonds. Then we're going to hit covalent. And under covalent, we have these three types of bonds. So, these are all bonds found between atoms, ionic, metallic, and under covalent, polar, nonpolar, and coordinate covalent bonds. So let's first go over ionic. So, don't forget, ionic bonds always between three types of things. Metals, metals hooked to non-metals. That's the big one. So there's three types of things for ionic bonds. Metal to non-metal, metal to polyatomic ion, a metallic hydride. And metals want to lose valence electrons, non-metals want to gain. So let's take a, a simple one. Let's take uh, potassium and sulfur. So watch what happens. We have K plus S. Now, K is in group 1, which means it's got one valence electron that it wants to lose. So we have an X. I'm going to make the X's for the metal. So that's one X for the valence electron. Sulfur's in group 16. It's got six valence electrons. I'm going to make them circles. S2, P1, P2, P3, P4. Now, potassium and sulfur. Sulfur has a higher electronegativity than potassium. Potassium wants to lose and sulfur wants to gain. So here's what it looks like electron dot wise. We have K plus. You don't have to put plus one, just put plus. Now to show that there was a total transfer of valence electrons, I use brackets. Bracket, bracket. Then we put in the nonmetal, sulfur. Before we put in the X's and O's for the valence electrons, put in the oxidation state for sulfur. The oxidation state for sulfur is a minus two. So before we put in the X's and O's, we have to see if that equals zero. It does not, so now we have to crisscross. You don't have to put one there because it's given. So we put a 2 right there. Now we can put in our valence electrons. Remember, they always have to have a stable octet around the negative ion. So we've got this many. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we have one X from the K here and another X from the K. Because remember, we have two Ks each giving up one. To name this. To name a binary ionic compound would be potassium sulfide. So that's potassium sulfide. That's an ionic compound. Remember, total transfer is the key to ionic compounds. Now, 
I said there's three types of ionic compounds, metal to non-metal. The next one's metal to polyatomic ion. So I'm going to give you the name, and we're going to write the formula. So the name is copper Roman numeral 2 nitrite. Two things. Since it has a Roman numeral, the Roman numeral means the metal has more than one oxidation state. So I'm going to put down Cu plus 2. Roman numeral 2 plus 2. And since the next name ends in ite, we know it's a polyatomic ion, so we look it up on the polyatomic ion chart. Metallic hydride is when Hydrogen steals an electron from either group 1 or group 2 metals. That's the only one it can steal from. So let's go with this. We're going to use calcium. Calcium's in group 2. That's a plus 2. And then when it's hooked with hydrogen, hydrogen can't be a plus 1 because you can't have two pluses together. So you look at the other oxidation state of hydrogen. It's a minus 1. So crisscross, and there is your metallic hydride, calcium. Hydride is the name of that. Now, for properties of ionic compounds, it's a crystalline solid, sometimes white. If it's a colored crystalline solid, then we have a transition metal in it. But, so we have a crystalline solid, high melting point. But the most important thing about ionic compounds is they will not conduct electricity in the solid state, like this. Na plus Cl minus. If that were like that, that will not conduct electricity because it doesn't have any free electrons, doesn't have any free ions. So, when I change that, if I put that in water, this turns into Aq. And when you see Aq next to an ionic compound, chances are that means that the salt or the ionic compound will dissolve in water and it now will conduct electricity not because of free electrons but because the ions the Na plus and the Cl minus are free to move around so that's why actually it's called an ionic bond because this is made up of ions Na plus ion and the Cl minus ion so big property ionic compounds won't conduct in solid form but they will conduct in water and they will conduct if you melt the ionic compound. So two ways to conduct due to free ions. And remember, usually the electronegativity difference is around 1.7 or higher. The higher the electro difference, the stronger the bond. Okay, that takes care of a quick review of ionic. Now let's go to metallic. All right, uh, this is a quick bond. We're talking about something like this. This is a copper wire, so it would be written like this, Cu solid. So, the definition of a metallic bond, fixed positive kernel. Remember, a kernel is everything but the valence shell. So the kernel is the nucleus and all the inside shells. Fixed positive kernel surrounded by a C, of mobile electrons. That means that the electrons in metals are like free to move around. So the big property about metallic bond is metals can conduct electricity because they have free or mobile electrons, okay? And they can conduct not only in the solid, but they can conduct in the liquid form like mercury. And that's about it for metallic bond, and that's easy. So now the first two bonds. Ionic bond has to be a metal hooked to something else. 
That's an ionic bond. Metallic bond just has to be a metal. And now the next three bonds we're going to talk about, if the substance doesn't have a metal in it, it can't be ionic and it can't be metallic. So it's got to be covalent. And here come the next three. <clears throat> now, covalent bonds, the word covalent means the co stands for cooperate. Valent means cooperate with valence electrons. Two nonmetals, one can't steal the other one's electrons. They have to share them. There's two ways to share electrons, valence electrons. Either you share them equally or unequally. Most of the time, two nonmetals, if they have different electronegativities, which they will, they share unequally. So we're just going to go over just a couple examples. H2O, those are two nonmetals. 3.4, 2.2, 1.2. So the electrode difference is 1.2. Oxygen, wickedly strong electronegative element. It's really going to pull the valence electron of hydrogen closer to it. We don't need any brackets because there's no total transfer. So a real quick one, here's how you do this one. There's my O. Pair, single, single, single pair. It's in group 16. Now, the hydrogens, there's an H here, there's an H here. The electron pair is closer to oxygen, so hydrogen's electron is way over here. Way over here. So here's the shared pair, here's the shared pair. Notice that shared pair is not between the two right in the middle because oxygen is pulling harder. So oxygen is slightly negative, the hydrogens are slightly positive. No brackets for the electron dots for a covalent because there's no total transfer. So that's the water molecule, okay? Now, if it's unequal sharing, it's gonna be a polar bond. Now, it's different. Is it a polar molecule? Well, you gotta look. Polar molecules, have something called an asymmetrical charge distribution. But I just tell my students in high school, if the molecule is asymmetrical, it's going to be a polar molecule. So if I cut that this way, it looks the same on both sides. If I cut it this way, not the same. That is an asymmetrical molecule. So this is not only a polar bond, this molecule is considered a polar molecule. And a polar molecule is also called this. A dipole. And water is just not your normal dipole. It's strong. So water is considered a strong dipole. Okay? Now, the next thing we have to talk about, because that was polar. Two nonmetals with different electronegativities are going to share unevenly. Unequal sharing is a polar bond. Asymmetrical molecule means it's an asymmetrical shape and it's a polar molecule. So what are nonpolar bonds? These are the easiest of all. Nonpolar bonds, there's only seven examples. The diatomic gases are the only examples of nonpolar bond because nonpolar bond is this. Equal sharing. So there's two ways to share in covalent, unequally or equally. And if it's equally, it's got to be a diatomic gas. So we'll electron dot one of the diatomic gases. We're going to electron dot N2. So I'm going to put an N here and N here. Now, N is in group 15, which means it has five valence electrons. And the way we're going to match them up is we're going to put singles next to singles. So the pair, pair is going to be here, pair is going to be here, 
So it's going to be single, 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 single. We're just going to match up the singles. So we have one here, one here, and one here. So N2 looks like this. N2 is a triple bond. It is the most stable diatomic gas because it is a triple bond. But now look, if I cut this thing, cut it this way, this way, this way, or this way, it's symmetrical. So this is not only a nonpolar bond, it's a symmetrical molecule, so it's a nonpolar molecule. Okay? So here's what we got. If it's unequal sharing, it's a polar bond. If this molecule is asymmetrical, it's a polar molecule. Equal sharing is a nonpolar bond, and it can only be a diatomic gas. And if it's equal sharing and a nonpolar bond, the molecule is symmetrical, it's got to be a nonpolar molecule. But now, watch this one. CH4. 2.2, 2.6, So there is an electro difference in CH4. So it's going to be unequal sharing. CH4 unequal sharing. Now let's electron dot this thing. So we know it's going to have polar bonds. Remember, carbon's weird. It should be a pair in two singles, but it's not. It's a single, 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 single. Then we're going to go with the hydrogens. H, 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 H. The next thing we're going to do is, since carbon is more electronegative, carbon's more electronegative, it pulls a little bit harder. So we're going to have the pair closer to the carbon. So, that's unequal sharing. So this molecule, CH4, has four polar bonds. One, two, three, four. So, four polar bonds because of unequal sharing, but now let's see if the molecule is symmetrical or asymmetrical. So, in order to do that, we got to cut it. Looks the same on both sides. Looks the same on both sides. Look the same on both sides. So this molecule is symmetrical. So this is a crazy example because it has four polar bonds due to unequal sharing, but that molecule, since it's symmetrical, is a nonpolar molecule. So polar bonds, but a nonpolar molecule due to symmetry. Okay, so that's a weird one. You have to just look and see what shape the molecule is. Next one. The next one is coordinate covalent bond. And this one is real interesting and real easy to spot. So we're going to electron dot water again. So there's water. Uh, Oxygen is slightly negative because it's the second strongest electronegative element on the whole periodic table. So here's the water molecule. And what could happen would be this. If we bubbled HCl into the water, First of all, water is polar because it's asymmetrical. HCl is polar because it's asymmetrical. Since they're both polar substances, they can dissolve in each other. Rule, likes dissolve likes. So polar dissolves polar, and nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. But you can't do the other thing, which is polar and nonpolar, they don't mix. Oil is nonpolar, water's polar. They don't mix. So watch what happens here. This H plus is dangling way out here because its electron is closer to chlorine. So what could happen is as this floats over the water molecule, 
the H plus gets attracted to this unshared pair of electrons and jumps right on top of it. And so this, let me show you. That H from the HCl jumps right on top of there. So that H from HCl jumps on top of that unshared pair, and it's easy to spot a cord and a covalent bond because both electrons come from the same element. So it's not going to be an XO, it's either going to be an OO or an XX. That's how you spot a cord and a covalent bond. So that H jumps over there, so this H is gone like this. So the definition for a coordinate covalent bond, when one atom has an unused pair of electrons and another atom needs two electrons to become stable, that H plus needed two electrons to become stable, so it jumped right on top of the unshared pair in water. So that is a coordinate covalent bond. Now the cool thing about coordinate covalent bonds, every polyatomic ion has at least one coordinate covalent bond, at least one, okay? So this right now is called hydronium, which is a polyatomic ion. So we'll do one more example. And this one is going to be SO4 minus 2. That is a polyatomic ion. That's the sulfate polyatomic ion. So we're going to put an S right here. S is in group 16. S2, P1, P2, P3, P4. And we're going to put the O's. We're going to put an O here, an O here, an O here, and an O here. Now, right away, you can tell, hey, look it, pair, pair, those are probably going to be CCBs. Oxygen is in the same group as sulfur. It needs two. So here's X, 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 pair, pair, single, single, pair, pair, single, single, pair, pair. Now, this pair and this pair, those are polar molecules. Excuse me. Those are polar bonds because the oxygen is pulling harder. So polar bonds. That's a polar bond and that's a polar bond. All right, unequal, unequal sharing of uh, electron pairs. Now, these two, what's going to happen is this single is going to move up to there. This single is going to move over to here. So it looks like this. So now, this and this those are coordinate covalent bonds. Those two are coordinate covalent bonds. All right? Now, the interesting part is this oxygen has eight around it. This oxygen has eight around it. The sulfur has eight around it. But these two oxygens down here, this one needs one right here. And this one needs an electron right here. So how many electrons does SO4 need? One there and one there, that's two. So look at the formula. SO4 minus two. The minus two is they need an electron at that oxygen and they need an electron at that oxygen. So that's coordinate covalent bonds right there. Every polyatomic ion has them. The next video is we're gonna start with bonds between molecules, okay?